In this lesson, we will discuss chemical formulas. Chemical formulas that show the kinds and numbers of atoms in the smallest representative unit of that substance. Monatomic elements are represented by their symbols. We discussed that in our last lesson. For example, sodium ion is a monatomic ion. It's represented by the elemental symbol Na in its ion charge of plus one. Chloride, Cl, negative one, is a monatomic element represented by their symbol and charge. And notice how I added the IDE. There are seven naturally occurring diatomic molecules in nature. We need to memorize them. To help us memorize, I suggest putting a little star in the table of the periodic chart. Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Those are the seven elements that in nature never exist as a single atom, but always as a molecule made up of two elements. So in nature, you never find just an H. You'll find an H bonded to itself, written as H2. In nature, you'll never find just a single oxygen all by itself, it'll be double bonded as molecular oxygen, O2. And nitrogen has its triple bond, H2O2, N2, always exist, buddied up with itself, never alone. The same is true for fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Whoops, I should have put the I and then here. There I got them. I just backward that one there. No worries. Here we have a little saying that helps me remember. It's a sentence. Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. You can see that. Horses need oats for clear brown eyes. It's just a little mnemonic device to help me remember. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine as the seven naturally occurring elements. Here are some definitions to review. A molecular formula, we define that as the kind and number of atoms present in a molecule. So for instance, if I wrote a molecular formula for a molecule called carbon dioxide, CO2, I would know that there's exactly one carbon and two oxygens in that compound. I do not know the molecular shape, or in other words, the connectivity of the atoms, but I do know how many of each kind there are. Remember for ionic compounds, which we commonly called salts, the basic building block was called a formula unit. It's the lowest whole number ratio of the compound. And remember, these are three-dimensional crystalline solids. For example, NaCl is the smallest subscript ratio possible for a plus one combining with a minus one charge. It would be incorrect to write Na2Cl2 or Na3Cl3. We need the lowest ratio possible, and that's called its formula unit. When we name the metals of transition ions, we must include a Roman numeral in its name. Do you remember in a previous lesson, and I'm gonna make a note we're on slide 30, but I'm gonna bring back my periodic table, the one that we earlier wrote on, all of the common charges of the monatomic ions. We placed in there with confidence, plus one in the column one, plus two in column two, and so forth. And I said, all of these shorties in the middle vary their charge. They transition their element, or their electrons in the outermost ele uh, electron shell, and therefore we don't know what charge they have. So we're letting you know, based on a Roman numeral, what charge it carries. So for instance, if I were to ask you, hey, what's the char charge on a copper ion? You would say 
I don't know. It lives in the heartland of, I don't know its charge by where it lives. But if I reported copper two ion, you would know that copper was a plus two and therefore it lost two electrons. If I told you tin lost four electrons by placing a Roman numeral of four next to it, you now know its charge is plus four. Roman numerals must be used for those transition elements of variable charge. The Roman numeral tells me the charge, or in other words, the number of electrons it lost when forming a compound. Let's name, just as some practice, name the following elements. Tin, we know that tin, let me make a number line. Tin has an elemental symbol of Sn. If it lost two electrons, it's a plus two. It would be named tin two ion. If tin lost four electrons, it would become a plus four charge, and now we name that ion is tin four ion. See how that Roman numeral indicates the charge it's carrying. Iron has a variable charge. It can sometimes lose three electrons, developing a plus three charge, and we would have to name that as iron three ion. Or sometimes iron loses only two electrons, Fe plus two, named iron two ion. We wrote down three exceptions in an earlier lesson. Those were silver, cadmium, and zinc and we place those in the periodic table already. So remember, do not use a Roman numeral for silver, cadmium, or zinc, but you always use a Roman numeral for any of those positive ions that we do not know the charge based on where it lives. To repeat, I'm on slide 31. I'm gonna bring up my periodic table. On this chart, you see that we have written in negative charges over here. Those will always be the same. And we've written aluminum plus three, zinc, cadmium, silver. And we wrote in for column one and column two. Every other positive metal ion, every other one, must have a Roman numeral in its name to let the reader know the charge that that ion is carrying always a Roman numeral. Let's practice. What's the charge on the ion typically formed by each of these elements? And this is just a chance to practice the Roman numeral system along with finding the elements with the charges we wrote on the periodic table. You'll probably want to pause, fill this out, and when ready, come back and check your work with me. Well, welcome back. Letter A, let's check that out. We see that sulfur will commonly form a minus two charge. We name negative ions by changing the last part of the element to IDE. It's called the sulfide ion. Write the name of each ion form, and down here, name each ion as a cat. Oh, the, okay, so now I understand. This is a negatively charged ion, so it's an anion. I didn't know what it asked us to do. I figured it out. Letter B is lead. Its elemental symbol is PB. If it lost four electrons, it's a plus four. Now notice, I would not know what lead was unless it told me in parentheses, because it lives in the heartland of, I don't know your charge by where you live. So I have to use a Roman numeral in its name the Roman numeral tells me its charge, and again, since it's positive, we'll call that a cation. Letter C, strontium. Strontium, SR is its elemental symbol. It lives in group 2A, right there underneath calcium, so we know it collects a plus 2 charge. Let me make that neater. Strontium is a plus 2. Oh my goodness, Linda. SR plus two, it's called strontium ion, and it is a cation, positively charged.
Letter D is argon. Now argon is a noble gas, so therefore there's no charge associated with argon. We just simply call it argon. It's a neutral atom, not positive or negative. Bromine lives in group 7A. It will be a negative one charge, just like all the negatives in column 7A. Bromide is how we name that. And since it's negative, it's an anion. Copper, with one electron lost, is Cu carrying a plus one charge. And friends, it's fine to do plus or plus one. It's just a preference. And you may certainly even do Cu with one plus. That's all the same to me. We'll name that copper with a Roman numeral one and the word ion. And since it's positive, we know it's a cation. Selenium, its elemental symbol is Se. It lives in group 6A, so it will carry a negative two charge. Since it's negative, it ends in IDE. We call it selenide. It's negative, so a negative ion, an ion. Silver, AG, and we know with confidence it's a plus one. We do not put a Roman numeral with it because we always know its charge. Since it's positive, it's a cation. Letter J is the element cesium. Its elemental symbol is CS. It's in group one, so we know it carries a plus one charge. We simply call it a cesium ion. No Roman numeral because we know with confidence it's always a plus one. And pluses are cations. And the last one was phosphorus. The elemental symbol is P. It's in group 5A, and we wrote a negative three charge there. Phosphorus becomes phosphide. It actually lops off two of the syllables, doesn't it? Phosphide. And again, since it's negative, it's an anion. How'd you do? Did you get an A plus? Let's put this to work, looking for formulas of positives and negatives and creating something that we call a binary ionic compound. The term binary means that it consists of two elements. The prefix bi means two. We will always have a metal combining with a nonmetal. We always have a positive ion combining with a negative ion to create an electrically neutral compound. A binary ionic compound is a compound that consists of two elements. The first will be a metal, which is positively charged. The second will be a nonmetal, which is a negative charge. Combining them in a ratio that produces an electrically static neutral compound. And those rules, we will always write the metal ion first. Positive is always first. Then we write the negative, the negative that ends in ide when we name them. We know that the net charge of the compound must always add to zero. And we use those subscripts to indicate how many of each ion you need to balance the charge. And I'll show this method of balancing the formula using what I call the crisscross method. In this method, the numerical charge of each ion is crossed over and used as the subscript of the other ion. The number is dropped down. Not the signs, but the number. Let's try that. So let's write the formula for the binary ionic compound formed between magnesium and chlorine. Go to your periodic table. You'll find the elemental symbol of magnesium and in your periodic table, we wrote that it's a plus two. And I'm just gonna write the charge way up high. It's a tool I need to figure out the formula. It's not part of the formula, so I'm gonna write it up high. And then the element chlorine is the symbol Cl, and we wrote in its box that it's a minus one charge. Now notice that it's not electrically neutral. 
that a plus two and a minus one does not add to zero. So that tells me I need to crisscross. The negative one is going to come around and down, not the, the charge, but the number. And the two from the plus two comes around and down. We wrote a chemical formula, MgCl2. And we say that by calling it magnesium chloride. Between the element sodium, we find its symbol as Na, and we know it carries a plus one charge. You find oxygen, and in the box we wrote that its charge is a minus two. Now that comes quickly to me, but you have to sit there and stare at those elements until those charges become second nature. The plus one and the minus two do not add to zero, so we have to crisscross. I bring this around and down. It takes two units of a plus one charge to electrically balance one unit of a negative two charge. Our compound would be called sodium oxide. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Let's try another and I'll see if I can hold off my second sneeze. Aluminum, Al is its symbol, and we know it carries a plus three charge, with the element sulfur, who carries a minus two charge. Since it's not electrically balanced, we know to take the number and crisscross, bring them around and down. And our compound becomes Al2, S3. Two units of a plus three electrically balance three units of a minus two to create a compound called aluminum sulfide. Pretty simple, isn't it? Here we have a Roman numeral provided for us, iron with a Roman numeral of three. Well, that's easy enough because iron it's elemental symbol plus three, and it's telling us the charge with that Roman numeral as a plus three. Oxide we've learned is a minus two, so when we crisscross, we bring the number around and down as a subscript quantity. It becomes Fe2O3, and remember when we name it, we have to include that Roman numeral. This is called iron three oxide. Calcium, who is elemental symbol plus two. Sulfur, elemental symbol S, and it's a minus two. Hey look, that already balances to zero, so no crisscross necessary. It's simply CAS. One unit of each balances that electrically. You might want to pause and just work ahead and I'll keep filling in the answers and check back to make sure your work is correct when ready. Here we have letter A, a plus two with a minus two, barium sulfide. Li is a plus one, O is a minus two, we crisscross and we get Li2O and we call that lithium oxide. Calcium with its plus two, nitride with a minus three, we need to crisscross Ca3N2, and we say that as calcium nitride. Copper plus two, iodide, that's an I with a negative one, so we need to crisscross Cui2. Copper requires a Roman numeral and it comes from the charge. Not how many you have in the formula, but the charge that it carries, copper to iodide. And again, I'll let you check your work. Sodium iodide is a plus one with a minus one. Tin two chloride is a plus two with a minus one. Potassium sulfide, plus one minus two. Rubidium nitride, RBN, I'm sorry, RB3N, B, 
barium fluoride and lithium bromide. Now remember, what I'm doing here, I find the positive and I look up its charge. I find the negative and I find its charge. You find those on the periodic table. Absolutely, everyone is written in your periodic table. And if it's not, you see a Roman numeral with it. And your job is simply to crisscross those charges to make an electrically neutral compound. When you name them, you say the name of the positive. Check to see if it needs a Roman numeral. Zinc does not because it's always a plus two. Last one ends in IDE, zinc sulfide. Say the name of the positive, potassium, does not need a Roman numeral. Say the name of the negative, ending in IDE. Say the name of the positive, check to see if it needs a Roman numeral. It does not, it's a plus two barium. And the negative with IDE, barium oxide. Now here's copper. It requires a Roman numeral. Now to find the Roman numeral, we work backwards. We have to figure out the charge on the copper. Look and find bromide on your periodic table. It's in group seven, so you know it's a minus one. But there's two total units there. Two units of a minus one is a net negative of minus two. That means copper had to be a plus two to create an electrically balanced compound. That's what's called copper two bromide. Now remember, the Roman numeral is not how many you have, but the charge on the ion. Next one is CuO. Again, we know copper requires a Roman numeral because we did not write a charge in the box on our periodic table. Work backwards. Find oxide. You know that it's a minus two because it's written in your periodic table. I know that it has to be a positive two to combine to make an electrically neutral compound. This is copper two oxide. Here we have silver sulfide and aluminum selenide. How are you feeling with that? It just takes practice. It looks easy when I do it. You try some on your own. And that ends our binary ionic compound lesson.